Russia. The largest country in the world that is full of many beautiful cities, amazing landscapes, and also a country that has historically been full of crippling depression. My name is Roman, I'm Russian, and I spent 24 years of my life living in Russia before I moved from there right after the start of the war in Ukraine. And as somebody who's lived in Russia, I want to say that Russia is pretty much just like any other country. It has its advantages and its disadvantages, with the main one, of course, being that Russia is currently not a free country that oppresses free speech and criticism of the government. And even though Russia is my motherland and I have a lot of love for it, in this video I thought it'd be fun to look at the things that I hated about living in Russia. And I'll try to make this video not political, but more so just funny. Oh, and by the way, I stole the idea for this video from a fellow YouTuber living ironically in Europe. He has some funny videos like this about Romania and Serbia. But without further ado, let's get into my least favorite things about living in Russia. Yes, I decided to start this video with something that is actually not really Russia's fault even, because geographically a lot of Russia is located in pretty cold areas of the world. And Russia literally also has some of the coldest cities in the world like Yakutsk. And even though a lot of people know that Russia is a country with a lot of snow and that is cold, I think you people truly do not understand how cold Russia gets. I am actually from the city of Chelyabinsk, in the middle of nowhere in Russia. Let me just check right now actually. Alright guys, it's minus 18 Celsius right now in my hometown. And, uh, <laughs> just a couple of days ago, my mom was telling me that it was basically around minus 28 to minus 32 during one of the days. So that is pretty ridiculous, right? Some parts of Russia can be warmer, like Moscow, for example. However, where I grew up, it was real Russian winter. For example, when I was a kid and I was going to school, they would only cancel classes if the weather was colder than minus 30 Celsius. If it's any less than minus 30, for example, minus 29, that means that we should send kids out there in the fucking dehabilitating frost to go to school. I mean, what are you gonna do? And honestly, guys, as somebody who's lived outside of Russia for a while now, who's actually gotten used to less colder weather, I honestly cannot fathom going back to my hometown right now, because minus 30 Celsius is ridiculous. You have to wear two pairs of pants, and the thing is, the summers are not cold, they're hot as well. So I think the people living in Russia probably have the biggest wardrobe out of anybody in the world, because you gotta have clothes for weather ranging from minus 30 Celsius to plus 40 Celsius. And I swear to god, the winters and snow on the streets in Russia probably lasts for like more than half a year, honestly. In Chinavis, for example, the snow maybe melts by the start of like May, end of April. And the snow also gets dirty, looks very depressing, there's slush everywhere, and overall the cities are just covered in sheets of ice and all these puddles that are basically impossible to walk around. And essentially every city other than Moscow in Russia turns into a complete shit show during winter. It's just really, really depressing. Yes, this is also another characteristic of Russia. In Russia, essentially, if you hold your money in rubles, you might be an idiot, because the Russian currency is basically never stable and it's always going ape shit. If we look at the graph of how the exchange rate of the ruble to dollar changed in the last 20 years, it's basically like... <laughs> Yeah, so essentially the currency crashes like twofold around every like five, six years or so, and usually these crashes of the ruble are caused obviously by Russia's brilliance foreign policy, and the sanctions that follow as a result of uh, Russia's brilliant foreign policy. So, essentially, when you live in Russia, you live in with an expectation that sometime soon, the currency and the economy is gonna go apeshit again. You're essentially waiting for the next time everything crashes down. <laughs> That's the sort of gameplay loop of living in Russia. We went from a dollar being about 30 rubles to it being around 60, 70, and now we're pretty much close to 100 rubles for a dollar. So yeah, I do have to say, right now I'm very very happy that I no longer hold my money in uh, Russian rubles. Because <laughs> honestly, like, even Bitcoin is a more trustworthy currency at this point. <coughs> yes, that is correct. In Russia, we have a curfew on selling alcohol. In the majority of the country, and also in Moscow, that curfew is 11 p.m. in the night. Even if the store is open, they will not sell you alcohol if you visit the store after 11 p.m. And in St. Petersburg, for some weird reason, it's actually 10 p.m. And the thing is, this problem can be kind of solved by basically going to these corner shops in Russia that basically just sell alcohol whenever, and there's a ton of these shops, and everybody knows where a shop like this is at around their neighborhoods. By the way, just warning you guys, if you go to one of these places at like 3 a.m. in the morning, be very careful and prepare something for self-defense. <laughs> 
Because we know what kind of people are going in to buy alcohol at 3 a.m. usually in Russia. So yes, in Russia you actually can get these drinks pretty easily after the curfew starts. However, it would be nice if it just didn't exist, like in the majority of the world. And I could be able to just walk in into any 24-7 like supermarkets and just buy myself a beer or vodka or whatever I want that very sad day. Without having to go to some shady place with Gopniks. And I really never understood why this law even exists. I guess they're trying to make Russians drink less, but... Bro, try having a decent country. That will stop people from drinking. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that... I really do not think that it's working. Oof, this next one is, uh... <laughs> This is the pain of my entire, you know, childhood and teenage life and basically, you know, until I moved from Chelyabinsk, actually. But basically, the thing about Russia is that a lot of the Soviet housing, you know, the Kami blocks, the Khrushchevkas, they have a central heating system, so you actually don't have to have, like, a boiler in your apartments to heat up your water or whatever. However, the cost of that is that in the summer, always, for two weeks, it's always two weeks, Russia has water maintenance. So essentially what happens is that you get nothing but cold water only during some of the hottest weeks and months of the year. And essentially if you're broke and you come from a regular family in a regular kami block, like me, you didn't have a boiler, you didn't have AC, or any of these first world things, you know? So the way my family and I would take showers and wash ourselves during these two weeks of water being shut off is basically you get a giant saucer, you put water in there and then you heat it on your stove, and then you go in and you get a, like a little plastic tub, you put it inside of your bathtub, you turn on the cold water that's running in your house, and you just pour that hot boiling water inside and kind of mix it to your own liking, and basically then you just sit there and kind of, you're basically kind of grabbing water and, you know, pouring over yourself and, like, trying to, you know, keep the soap out of your eyes and shit, and you're, like, sitting in, like, a dumbass fucking pose, you know, trying to, like... Basically, it's a pain in the fucking ass. But a lot of people these days don't really feel this because they do have water heaters in their house, but we did not for a very, very long time. It's always been my least favorite thing about Russian summer. Now, when it comes to public transports, I will be complaining about a certain type of public transport because credit where credit's due, Chelyabinsk is getting better at this. They've been getting new trams and new buses recently. Well, those new buses actually old buses that were used in Moscow, but uh... <laughs> Moscow citizens are first-class citizens, so, you know... Мы просто, блядь, в Челябинске за старшим братом доносим выкинутые ненужные вещи. However, a large part of public transportation in a lot of provincial Russian cities are these fucking hellish things known as маршрутка. It's essentially a minibus that is always crammed with a fuck ton of people, there's never any seats, there's always too much seats inside, so it's impossible to even sit comfortably. It's basically a bucket on wheels that is just so cold in the winter. I've actually almost frozen myself to death a couple of times going to uni in these things. The drivers of these marshrutkas are just the worst, they always get into crashes and everything. I mean, there's literally just too much to say. It's the worst. I've actually already done a whole video on this a few years ago, and it's fucking hilarious. One of my most, like, rage-filled videos ever, because it's just me bitching about how marshrutkas are the worst thing created by humanity. And they are! Because what marshrutka is, is essentially kind of an unlicensed public transport that is basically there because there's not enough bus routes in the city, at least in Chelyabinsk that's the case. And I fucking hate these things. I absolutely despise them, and as a tall person too, they are the worst. So, uh, marshrutka, I hate it. Worst thing in the world, never again. Moskva! Говно! Алфа! Заебись! Yes, so uh, this is a bit of a more uh, politically related point, I guess. But this is something I already mentioned on this channel. Russia is a very centralized country, and all the taxes from everywhere around Russia go to Moscow, and then they are spread back. And essentially, Moscow is just kind of there to create a good look for Russia. You know, it's the cleanest, it's the best renovated, you know, it's the most high-tech Russian city you would get. And genuinely, Moscow has a lot of great places. The center of Moscow is great. But the point is, Moscow is the only thing that fucking matters. Because the rest of Russia is basically getting scraps, and the cities are way worse, they're way dirtier, the public transport is way worse, and so is the funding, obviously. For example, in Moscow, they've built literally tens and tens of new metro stations just in the last 10 years, and in St. Petersburg, they've built, like, around 3 or 4 stations in the last 2 years or something. And my hometown, Chelyabinsk, also had a metro project that was never finished. 
And you know, Moscow is constantly getting, you know, new projects of renovating the city, making it more sort of nicer to the pedestrians and whatever, right? And in Chelyabinsk, there was literally no change for years. Literally just on the 23rd year of my life, they finally built a new embankment in Chelyabinsk. That place was basically like, you know, a complete wasteland. Right in the center of the city, by the way, next to the river. There was an area that was a complete wasteland for decades. And they finally did something about it only when I was 23 years old. And only when I was really planning to move from Chelyabinsk. So, yes, Moscow is really the only thing that matters in Russia. Yes, you can imagine what probably I'm talking about here, but I've had some very, very crazy neighbors in Russia. I probably should make a full video about this at one point. But basically, for example, right next to where we lived, where we used to live with my family, on our staircase in our building, in our commie block, literally right where we lived, next to us, there was an apartment where there was an elderly couple and also their son, who was about like 40 something. So this guy was like a drug addict, an alcoholic, and a thief, and he was fucking insane. So this guy lived with his parents, right, and he would basically always get shit-faced and then try to come back home and his parents would not allow him in. And what this would turn into is that this fucker would be smashing on their door and screaming on the staircase for like hours during the night. And we could hear all this, by the way, and we would call the cops and the cops would basically just be like, oh yeah, yeah, we can't really do anything about it. <laughs> But essentially what would happen is that this guy would knock and scream for some time during the night, you know, trying to get into his parents' apartments. And then essentially once, you know, realizing that it's not going to happen and that his parents are too stubborn, what he usually would do is that he would lay down and sleep right on the stairs that I had to walk through to go to school, university, whatever I was going to. And it's really not fun to, you know, have to step over a fucking drunk, like, homeless looking dude that smells like piss in the morning. Doesn't make you feel good about yourself, really. And worse than that is this guy was also pissing and shitting on our staircase in our building, not directly in front of our door or anything, but you could definitely smell it. And actually at one point when I got a little older, he would sometimes try to ask me for money, which I never gave him. So yeah, I had some fucking insane neighbors and there's been, <laughs> there's been many other stories by the way. And overall just the neighborhood that I lived in in Chilebens had this reputation of a sort of a Gopnik neighborhood and it definitely was to a certain degree. But yes, just in general, a lot of the people in my neighborhoods and the general atmosphere wasn't affluent, wasn't very happy. And I did have some lovely neighbors, don't get me wrong, some good grandmas. Among these alcoholics and gopniks, there are good people living in these areas, you know? And the majority of the people are good, I would say, but... Yeah, not the greatest place to live in, and I don't really want to come back. And as the last point here, I guess I wanted to kind of get into it and try to be deep or something, but basically, yes, Russia is a country that is characterized by its lawlessness, pretty much. Not only are the people in power, you know, constantly breaking the law and the constitution, they have no respect for it and they get away with it, but also the laws in Russia, for example, the repressive laws regarding the war in Ukraine, a lot of it is just nonsense. And the Russian laws about, you know, banning certain kinds of, you know, free speech, it's all done in a way so that they could basically just jail anybody they would want to jail. And that's just the overall feeling you have in life in Russia. You know that your life essentially holds no value to the state. You know that essentially if they want to deal with you, they will. They will do anything to you and they will get away with anything. And also, for my entire life, even before I was like woke on, you know, Russia and its governments, I've never had any trust and any positive feelings about Russian police. It's an entity that I always try to avoid in every single way possible and that's how I want my life to continue. Just not somebody who I want to deal with. And also in Russia, if they started a criminal case against you, you are going to jail because our conviction rate is like 99.8% or something. Basically, when you live in Russia and you actually know how your country works, you know that your future and your life could be taken away from you at any point. Or rather than that, the governments might just decide to play some Hearts of Iron 4 in real life, you know what I'm saying? And essentially what happens is that, you know, your country gets ruined and all of your future plans and everything you held dear and near to you is destroyed and ruined and you had no say in it, of course. So, uh, this is kind of what I said regarding the currency thing. You spend your life waiting for the next dumb shit to happen, for the next economic crash, for the next destruction of free speech or whatever. It's just not fun. I just want to live in a country where I could have at least a little bit of a belief in tomorrow. You know what I mean? And modern Russia is just not a country that seems like that to me these days. So that is pretty much the main reason why I left Russia and why I no longer live there. And it's truly, really sad 
because once again, I love Russia. I think Russia has unlimited potential. I think our people have unlimited potential to bring actual good to the world. And I do think that Russia can possibly be a decent member of the world community. But once again, currently that's not the case. And it is really sad. But once again, I do really hope that one day my people in my country does get to see brighter days where the individual would be respected and where the law would actually be respected as well. But yeah guys, these are some of the reasons why I hated living in Russia. If you want to see a second video about this where I actually talk about things that I did like about living in Russia and now actually having lived in different countries and having spent a lot of time in different countries over the last few years, I did notice a few things that Russia does really really well, believe it or not. And usually, by the way, these good things about Russia are not there because of the work of the Russian government, but are there actually despite the work of the Russian government. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it could be very interesting, let me know what you guys think, and I guess that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, then please make sure to slap the like button, and also if you guys would like to support me additionally, that is financially of course, make sure to check out the link down in the description, and become a YouTube member. It's basically like YouTube's own version of Patreon, it's a monthly donation and it's the best way to support me, or you could also do a super thanks underneath this video. But yeah guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.